The Samsung Galaxy A04s has been the phone I've carried around for the past month now. Samsung has packed a lot of upgrades into this year's new entry budget device to make it fit into the current lineup, such as the fluid 90Hz refresh rate display, a 5000 mAh battery, a 50 megapixel main camera, and they've still kept in our favorite budget phone features such as the headphone jack and the micro SD card slot. In case you're wondering, yes, you can move apps to a micro SD card in the phone, and that's why I went with the 32GB version of the Samsung Galaxy A04s. Personally, I think it's kind of funny how this phone has a higher battery milliamp hour rating than even the S22 and the S22 Plus. Other features that I really like on this phone is the face registered unlock as well as the physical fingerprint scanner. It's been a while since we've taken a look at a budget phone from Samsung. As someone who pays for these devices with my own money, I have no brand loyalty and I will tell you my experience honestly. Everything from the long term battery life to the cameras, the gaming experience and more will be addressed and explained now. To start, on the Samsung Galaxy A04s, we get a design revision to that back plastic, which is now glossy. There's a pattern of lines, like waves, that do a good job of masking fingerprint smudges. This main rear camera lens has seen a major megapixel count improvement coming from the Galaxy A03s and the A02s before it. I still have the A02s, so I'll be comparing them side by side for the cameras, and we'll see if 13 megapixels to 50 megapixels here really is that dramatic or not. I'll throw in some comparisons to other phones, and my review here is subjective to the price. That cost for me early on was $150, but the prices of these A-series phones fluctuate a lot depending on where you live, and thankfully, this phone is going to be available in most countries. I'm introducing it to you because this is the lowest end tier device I recommend. I did not have high hopes for the packaging of the A04s, given the box and the accessories of these budget devices just seem to get worse and worse every year, but I was pleasantly surprised. The wall adapter came with my phone, as well as the USB-C to A cable, the SIM tool, and a quick start guide. The tray on the left of the phone has a spot for two nano SIMs and the micro SD card. The headphone jack, loudspeaker, and USB-C port are found on the bottom. Both the volume rockers and the power button have an audible but plasticky click. I won't complain about the phone's build quality, given its price. To me, it does feel better in the hand than its predecessors. On the A04s, Samsung used a PLS LCD display which has a pixel density of 270. This is the lowest resolution I would recommend at 1600 by 720 pixels. I forgive Samsung for going this low on the resolution because we get a 90Hz refresh rate panel on a phone that's this affordable. I don't mind the range of 390 to 400 nits peak brightness even when I'm outside, and the colors here are good. Not color accurate and we can't change it from standard to vivid mode like we can on the Galaxy S series phones. But but the colors are pleasant to look at here. The 90Hz refresh rate is adaptive, so it scales down to 60Hz when it's not benefiting from it, thus saving battery life, and more importantly for this phone, adaptiveness prevents lag and frame drops. I watched movies and YouTube videos on my commute to Toronto, which was a pleasant experience. It is currently the only phone I'm using when I leave the house, and I think that's important to mention, because I do feel the frustration with budget phones sometimes, it's just not about the phone's display. Now we've gone through the boring details, let me show you some useful manual adjustments that I made in the settings to make it snappier, and to some extent, you'll need to do this. In the settings, under display, I changed the navigation bar from buttons to the modern swipe gestures. I changed the home screen grid size to 5x5, and under the motions and gestures menu, I enabled double tap to wake. It's important to enable developer options so we can reduce animations manually to a half. Here, we can also enable force allow apps on external, which will let us move games and apps onto the micro SD card when we're in the apps menu of settings. In case you're wondering, I'm using the 128GB SanDisk Extreme Pro microSD. The microSD storage is slower than the internal eMMC 5.1 speeds of this phone, but that won't be a problem for performance here. Despite this obviously not being the usual mid-range phone I would review, I do see this being a really good gift for someone who hasn't received a device upgrade in a while, and when you see the battery life readout, you'll see how it can make for a good secondary device, even for wealthy people too. I timed how long it took the A04s to charge fully from 0 to 100%, it was 2 hours and 20 minutes. Now if you're in a rush, and you only got an hour, you can actually get it up to 50%. That's not bad. You can comfortably expect over 7 hours of screen on time with a full charge, and a lot more than that if you're just watching videos and browsing social media with the connectivity options turned on. This isn't even with dark mode turned on or any of the power saving options, so if you are a light user and you're battery conscious, expect 2 days of battery life. 
Simply put, the A04S is a strong offering in the case of battery life, even when Wi-Fi, Bluetooth, and mobile data are turned on. For the gaming section of my review, we're going to touch on a few different game titles in different genres, but we're going to start with my favorite, Call of Duty Mobile. Even after downloading the HD graphics packages, I was limited to the low graphics option with the medium frame rates, so you can see how I was not impressed with the performance of COD Mobile on this phone. Old school RuneScape, however, was a very nice nostalgic experience that did not suffer from hardware bottlenecks. Playing this game did not take a big hit on my battery life either because it's not graphically intensive. Now, Mario Kart, Evoland, and Evoland 2 all have a screen optimization problem because of the notch, but they play fantastically, as you'd expect. Orbia is another fun game with great performance because it is not graphics intensive. Asphalt 9 was the odd game out because it couldn't even finish installation on this phone. PUBG Mobile allows us to play at HD settings on high frame rates, but the lag was too much. Balanced graphics with the high frame rate setting was the best I could play at while still enjoying it. The gameplay was alright, but I did encounter some stutter in all settings options, and it's nowhere close to playable at 90Hz. If you're still here and you're following along with my review, let me know by leaving a like on the video, and also, I want to know if you have any suggestions for A04S videos that I can cover. We can also go back and revisit the tab A8, I think that would be interesting. I could see how some people would have the opinion that 90Hz is useless here without a chip that can drive those frame rates. But at the very least, it does make the phone feel more modern than budget devices of prior years when you're scrolling around the home screen and basic supporting apps. For call quality, the person on the other end of the phone can definitely tell I'm not using a mid-range phone, such as the A53, which I also used a lot this year, but coming from the A13, which was another budget device, my friends and family did not complain a whole lot. I noticed slightly worse cellular connection in areas that I would normally get a few bars of data, I got one bar or even none, so it can have spotty data reception. When it's connected though, the speeds of 4G are good. As I mentioned earlier, I have the 32GB storage variant, and this one has 3 gigs of RAM. There is a 4GB RAM variant, that one has 64GB of storage, and it's available in India, a lot of Asian countries, and Africa already. With 3 gigs here, I have to say, it does leave another gigabyte to be desired. I encountered a few major hiccups that I believe were due to lack of RAM. The device care widget helps, doing a manual optimization in the settings is a good idea too. I'm used to it after using budget phones for years, but if you can snag the 4GB version in your country and the price difference is not too much in your region, I do recommend it. If not, don't stress it because the maintenance I mentioned does fix the problem after all. Samsung put the Exynos 850 into this phone. That is an 8 nanometer chip that is octa-core and it has the Mali G52 for graphics. It is not quite as powerful as the A13 that I already reviewed. You saw how this performed in gaming. In everyday tasks, however, once I made that animation scale adjustment in the developer options, it has been smooth sailing, snappy, and what I expected for the price I paid. Tech enthusiasts are not going to be impressed with the Geekbench 5 scores. I know I wasn't. The A04S scored a shockingly low 177 points for that single core score. It's laughable really if you're familiar with the scoring system. It shows the Exynos chip being more mediocre than most from MediaTek in terms of single core. Multi-core reflects everyday performance more so anyways. The phone comes out of the box running Android 12 and One UI Core version 4.1. It's almost like they're deliberately going back an Android version, but there is some good news. They do have a good record of software updates for these phones. Yes, even the A0 series. My older A02S, for example, shipped with Android 10, but is now running Android 12, the same version as this one. Samsung's Core One UI is a cut down version of the regular One UI that we'd find on the Galaxy S flagships. Now, the main differences are there's no DeX, there's no secure folder, and also we're missing the useful built-in screen recorder. But that last problem is nothing that can't be solved with a third-party app from the Play Store for free. We cannot connect the phone to a PC to get more control over it, such as viewing messages and notifications. For me, that would be nowhere close to a deal breaker. The speakers have seen a big improvement compared to the A02S, so now it sounds clearer at full volume. I would describe it as a richer sound, less tinny, and a bit more loud. Still, it is a single speaker, so don't expect a stereo vibe, and there's no Dolby Atmos to boost the DAC. Now, we're onto the cameras. The main 50 megapixel lens is the middle one. This is a 2 megapixel macro camera, and the top lens, unfortunately, is for depth sensing. Nothing cool. We saw exactly this type of camera configuration on the A13, and if you remember, the megapixel count is the same here. For the price, 
the main camera results are good. I took my pictures on the 50 megapixel mode. It takes more than a second to process, although the results justify that processing time somewhat. Color accuracy, sharpness, and dynamic range were right up to my expectations. Be very still when capturing a picture because in 50 megapixel mode, the slightest shake will result in a blur. If you really need to get a moving shot, I recommend moving down to the regular 3x4 mode. I brought a lot of phones to the park to show you how it stacks up against different price tier A-series phones. I think this is a good upgrade coming from the A03s and the A02s in terms of camera performance. Side by side with the phone that is two generations older, I see more detail and slightly better dynamic range. The A04s can get the job done at recording 1080p video at 30 frames per second. Enough to capture a memory, yes, but try to bring a tripod if you can, or some sort of stabilizer if you want to use the videos for anything beyond social media. The camera app has panorama, pro mode, and food mode in addition to the portrait blur which takes use of the depth sensing lens. The macro lens is the same one that's been used in Samsung phones for years now, at least this time I got to show it off in a different season. The front selfie camera is 5 megapixels at f2.2 aperture, it can record 720p video. Let me know if you approve of the selfies I took using it, in my opinion the selfies are usable. There is no IP rating on this phone but I took it out in the snow and in the rain when it was still autumn weather. I fully expect my A04s to withstand some light rain, even a spilled drink, as long as it's dried up in a timely manner. Given the price of the A04s, I think the camera improvement is enough to entice me. Now, there is an A04 without the S, and an A04e just to really make things complicated for us here, but I don't recommend to you my friends to buy either of those two devices. I picked this one for a reason, this is the lowest I would go for a Samsung budget device. Personally, I've been happy with this phone for the past month. I'll stay up to date with you in the comments. A big thank you to all of you, my friends, for subscribing, and I really appreciate your likes and comments. I hope I've done my job today in making this video worth your time.